Hello, everyone. I'm Debbie Nelson with Alternative to Meds podcast. I am pleased to introduce Dr. Samuel Lee. And in this interview, he is going to help the world be educated on spiritual psychiatry and how it will enhance and improve your mental health. Please enjoy this video. Hello, everyone. I'm Debbie Nelson with Alternative to Med Center with one of my favorite people in the whole wide world. Arts, I arts, know. Arts. Dr. Samuel Lee. Archangel Debitron. <laughs> so the reason that we were doing this is mm. really to discuss, number one, you've got this book and why you're so out mm. of the norm when you talk about spiritual psychiatry and what is it, what makes it missing in that realm. Sure. So yeah. let's hear it. 100%. Well, spiritual, I wrote a book called The Spiritual Guide to Mental Health. And spiritual psychiatry is simply, spiritual means consciousness or awareness. So, uh, you know, the first thing is no doctor can cleanse your mind. And so what we realize is this world up here is the world of metaphysics, the invisible world, the world of cause. So unseen belief systems, which were programmed from the ages of zero to seven, subconscious belief systems, and unseen thoughts, and you know unseen frequencies of words become felt feelings, which send a frequency into our cells, which manifests then onto the seen world, which science you know calls physics. But what we realize is, what we see is one percent of reality. Even an atom, atom has 99.9% space. Love is space. So what we're seeing is the crystallization of unseen thoughts, belief systems, words, frequencies, which come. And so it all started with sound. God said, let there be light. The ancient yogis call this Aum. So how did an atom form? Well, it started with sound. So the power of frequency, the power of words, the power of sound, sound is the medicine of the future. And so what no doctor will tell you that the most powerful medicine is your belief systems, your thoughts, your words, because those are sending information, coding instructions, affecting cell permeability, which affects which DNA are coded for, which affects protein expression and proteins are the expression of life. So modern day psychiatry is trying to treat it from the scene world, from what, you know, from serotonin, dopamine, GABA, glutamate, and what that can help symptoms, but it's not treating the root cause. You see 1% or less than 1% of all disease is we're born with or congenital. That means 99 point something percent of all dis-ease is coming from the world of metaphysics. And once we can learn how to be conscious, aware of our thoughts, awareness is the first step of change. Aware of our words. And so that's why I wrote the Spiritual Guide to Mental Health. You know, so it's focusing on the root cause, how to become aware of our thoughts and how to treat the root cause, how to reprogram our subconscious mind right? How to work with plant medicines, how to work with uh, meditation, how to work with breath work. And from there, we change the cause, the world of metaphysics, the world of the unseen, then that will change the effect, the world of physics. I love you. I love you too. I think um, we, we frequently talk about different people that come into yeah. alternative to meds, to sharing um, different stories uh -huh. but you know frequently you know i know what we talk about is you know anxiety the mm -hmm. abundance of anxiety especially now mm -hmm. everyone's anxious depressed yeah. Yeah. overwhelmed mm -hmm. and so when someone says something of this nature what is your response like what when you're talking about reprogramming mm -hmm. someone's They'll say, well, you don't understand. This is what I'm dealing yeah, with. And yeah. these are all the physical. Yeah, so yeah, what is it that yeah. you have to do in order to get to that point? Yeah. What? Amazing question. 99% um, of all psychiatric problems are because people identify with their thoughts. So when people are saying, oh, my God, my anxiety. Oh, my God, this is happening external. There, Where is the energy located? Everything is stuck energy. All disease is stuck energy that wants to move. It's located in the brain. 
in the mind. And that's nobody's fault because through centuries and centuries, science has believed that consciousness is located within the brain. But now what we're realizing and understanding is the mind will follow the breath or the breath will follow the mind. So when people are in anxiety, it's because emotions, thoughts are a record of the past. They're in the past. The subconscious belief system from the past is manifesting with, oh my God, what am I going to do? Oh my God, what if this happens again? And that's what traumas in the past, right? So um, at the end of the day, that's why I say the most powerful thing someone can learn how to do is to learn how to breathe. Because the breath is power. If you can learn how to regulate the biorhythm of the breath, it will regulate the rhythm of your brain waves, which will regulate your physiology, which you will drop into alpha brain waves into the present moment where there is no anxiety, where there is no depression. And so, um, learn how to breathe. I can tell if someone is depressed by the way they're breathing. I can tell if someone is anxious by the way they're breathing. I can tell if someone is manic by the way they're breathing because the mind will follow the breath or the breath will follow the mind. And so what we want to learn how to do is to let the breath lead the way. Because if we conquer the breath, it will conquer the mind. You conquer your mind, you'll conquer your biorhythm. Then you'll come into what is called heart coherence. So the biorhythms of the breath, uh, the, the brain waves, and the heartbeat are all connected. And the heartbeat is beating for you right now. And so right now, uh, consciousness is not located in the brain. What we're realizing is we're making the journey from the brain to the heart. Because the mind thinks it knows, but the heart knows. So uh, learn how to breathe. You never find anyone who goes swimming for 30 minutes, pop out of the pool and say, I'm anxious. I guess that's why uh, exercise, mm -hmm. and they're always saying how imperative exercise yeah. is for mental health. And that's yes. really what we're talking about. Yo, yes. Why it's so important is because it's forcing people to breathe differently, breathe deeply. Mm -hmm. um, that's why yoga is the same thing. You know, yes. everything is about mm -hmm. deep breath and yes. dropping into it. So this is what makes... Um, what alternative to meds is so special. Mm. You make the field of psychiatry special mm. because you're, you're changing that um, perception that it's simply, here's your medication. Mm, mm, mm. You're actually working towards helping people heal. Mm, mm. And that's beautiful. Yeah. And um, thank you. It's, we're doing it together. Yeah. We're doing well, we it, care. Yeah. We're all we truly really care. Together. Yeah. <clears throat> um, you're a special individual. Matter of fact, I get choked up sometimes. Mm. When I'm in the presence of different people, um, I know that their heart is so pure. I know that they're in it for the right reasons. Mm. It's not about money. It's not about anything else. It's really about mm. just trying to help give people viable tools and solutions. Yes. Because more than ever, we have this world of people that are seeking mm. solutions mm. on how to heal. Yes. That's the nice. difference. It's like we're trying to teach yeah. people how you what you need to do to help mm. heal yourself. 100%. So, thank you. We love you. Mm, I love you, too. Uh, I, love, I love you. I love you. <clears throat> I and, do. Uh, I love Dr. Lee. He's I amazing. too, yeah. Because we're all one. And love is the answer. So, no matter what we're going through, no matter what your loved one is going through, no matter what, right now, love is the answer. But love is a feeling which comes from seeing beauty. Can you see the beauty in your family member who's going through the struggle? Can you see the perfection in your child who is autistic? I'll tell you a story because once you see the beauty, because God is the energetic infrastructure that runs through all things and all people, there's beauty in it all. Once we re-perceive the frequency to see the perfection in each other and in all things, because, I'll tell you a story, a brother of mine told me this story. He was sitting on a plane 
and there was a mother in the middle and an autistic, quote unquote, autistic child looking at a comic book, her daughter looking at this comic book. And every page he was noticing, he was just aware. She was like, whoa, this is like Disneyland. Every single page was like, whoa, whoa. And my brother had that realization, wow. What if we could be like little children? Jesus said you must become like a little child. No conditioning, no programming. Everything is perfect the way it is. There's nothing to change. It's just with curious wonder. And so she was seeing everything as this, observing it as perfection. And, you know, and some, the voice inside of him said, say to the mother how beautiful her child is. But he, he wasn't in the mood. He wasn't in the mood. So he, he denied that voice. He went to the bathroom and of course on the way out, they end up right next to each other. And finally, he says to the mother, listen, I needed to tell you how beautiful your child is, the way she was seeing everything as perfect and um, Disneyland on every page. And as soon as he said that, the mother started crying. Mm. And it forever changed the way that her mother perceives her child. Because she only saw the struggle. But you see... The root cause of all suffering is the belief in lack. You see, the autistic child is probably not suffering because she doesn't know anything is wrong. She doesn't believe there's any lack. But the mother, if she's starting to believe, oh my God, my child needs to change, then automatically, as soon as you believe there's lack, as soon as you believe you need some, the way things are are not the way it should be, they're suffering. You know, I worked in LA as a psychiatrist in, in the Hollywood Hills. There's actors who have everything external. They're not happy because they believe they need more. They believe they need something outside of themselves to satisfy internal. There's a third, there's a child running around in Africa. Has absolutely nothing super happy because they don't believe, they, they don't know that they lack anything. So the key here is to see the beauty in ourselves first, the perfection made of the image and likeness of source creator God, perfect, whole, and complete in this moment, nothing to change. And then, then you'll start seeing the beauty and perfection in every single body, every single thing. Then you'll feel the love. And then you'll want to be here. And then guess what? Anxiety is cured in a second. I've seen it happen. As soon as someone falls in love, as someone, see, someone sees the beauty in something, they drop into the present moment because they want to be here. And anxiety and depression get out. Love is the answer. And earth is a school. We're here to learn how to receive, give, and share love.